This week on Sailing Lady Africa, we make a build-up for our saloon seating area. Ricky decided to rip out some of our interior windows. We test out some stone chip paint and start building our head. That we had the previous finish just had this on the edge and it was quite a thin relatively thin edge it's like uh, I think this is a 16 mil and I wasn't happy with it. I needed to put two edges on this on this um, 19 by 19 and and I trimmed the edge already to shape and now it makes it look like that so it's a lot thicker and I haven't finished this bottom one yet but that's pretty much what it'll look so it'll thicken up this whole edge and it's purely aesthetics and I know it's a lot of work just to get the aesthetics out of it but I think it'll be worth it in the end. So it looks like like that now and um, we'll take that second one we'll come and meet it in there and then we'll do an epoxy fillet on the inside we'll get rid of the paint do an epoxy fillet there on the edge do epoxy fillet so this is the edge now and I left that little bit of overhang so what I do is I just take that marker mark it up over there take it off and then I'll cut precisely on that line and I'll have the same edge as what's on there now so put it in place now and I've trimmed that edge I'm going to sand make sure that they perfectly flush the two and then I'll route to this edge I'll put it back As you saw when we started, we just had the thin lip and now that's like, not end product yet because we still need to sand a bit more and shape her nicely until it's like perfect but yeah, I think the, the thicker edging and it's, it's literally just one piece on so it looks like it's a bulky thick but it's not you know, all of that 6 mil the nice edging I think it looks way better, so worth the time only four and a half hours to get them on. So four and a half hours to get it up to there, excluding the curing time for the epoxy, which is overnight. So four and a half hours just for that effort. Your lens is dirty, honey. Ricky loved the rounded frame so much, he decided to change the design of our interior window frames. Why are you doing this? Because it had a square frame like that side. And now... But you painted it and all, and now you decide no, you don't want it. Because it had, had these plastic... Those plastic sliders and a, and a lens comes here in the middle, so you could open and close. The problem is you're only opening and closing half, so you only had half that view. Now with the new frames that look like the doors, I'm going to get the CNC cut and it'll be a nice rounded frame with a panel that comes up when you want to open and down when you want to close. So kind of like a port light but inside. Yeah, but inside and now you'll have that whole, you'll have the entire access to view the whole thing.
Leave a comment below if you think we should close up our bolts with a trim or just leave them open and painted. So, as you saw in the other episode that we epoxied those friends room trims and um, the reason I don't want to epoxy these ones is because these are working surfaces and those are not. So here you always going to be cutting and things like that and if you want to change the countertops you want the trimming to come off and uh, be able to replace the top trim it all nicely again right up to the edge and then put the trim on again and yeah this is the one I think yeah it'll show you in the, how we made this one and uh, so it's one solid piece that we've trimmed and mitered and everything to get in there and once it fits on it's like a glove and then you screw it in so then you take a couple of screws and there'll be a bit of adhesive on it and that'll just go on nicely like that and when you want to take it off, remove the screws and I'll make sure that the adhesive I've put is not too, too strong that it doesn't come out completely. This boat's been hardcore work. Would you recommend to anyone to do something like this? Huh. I, would, I would say how big is your budget and how much patience do you have? Because this is going to test every last bit of patience that you have. If you've got a bigger budget, it just makes, you don't have to try and, I'm, I'm trying to save costs on everything without compromising quality. So what does that mean? I need to put more time in myself. You want to save money, you've got to do it yourself. And another thing I say is try as much as possible. And I didn't, I try to think of everything, but there are some things I miss. When you, when you do, when you do cabinets, try and make everything the same size because, oh my gosh. And I know it's difficult on a boat because everything is, obviously you don't have, the sizes are not the same everywhere, you know, different cabinets are for different functions kind of thing, that's how I set it up. But that gives a lot more work, you know, it would have been easier if I told the guy 30 frames, he has the sizes and that's it, cut them all. Now we probably had like at least 15 to 20 different size doors, different size frames. These two are different sizes because this is a size for my electrical panel. So then this one had to be smaller because I didn't have enough room for it. So that had to be smaller. But then these two in length are also different. Those are longer than these ones. So I suppose I could have gotten a small electrical panel and all of that and made, try and make all four the same size. It would have saved me a lot of time, but I did it. It's there and I suppose it's custom. So, and yeah, like even on the inside of the cabinets, I'm fairing down to get it nice and smooth. It's very time consuming. That's another thing when you do a painting. Epoxy primers are the best primers. There isn't a better primer than an epoxy primer to go for. Especially it's with too, wood in the water. With anything there and, and you get especially formulated Sigma epoxy primers and they'll and you tell them what material you're applying to, what are you bonding, all of that, and they'll tell you fine, this is the epoxy primer to coat that material to prime this material. So they really clued up, they the world's biggest painting company, the company that owns it. Epoxy primer, great. Downside of it, if you don't paint within the curing time of the of the epoxy primer, if you don't paint the second coat on top of that, of obviously a 2K top coat or marine top side paint or whatever you're gonna paint on top of that, if you leave it until it goes hard, you have to sand all the epoxy primer because a little wax layer comes to the surface and it gets rock hard. So nothing will, add. well it doesn't really adhere as well. You might adhere and be like, oh no, it's, it's holding on for the first two years and then everything starts peeling off and chipping off. Prime is essential. Prime, if you did what we did like here, we primed everything because I knew that this is going to be long before I paint it again. So it's primed, it's dried, it's gotten hard and I've sanded it and I've actually, the epoxy primer filled in a lot of that wood little texture grain, even though this wood was smooth, smooth, smooth. This is an AA grade wood so it's smooth on both sides uh, with a triple triple lamination on a six mil so it, it's really strong really good wood but yeah so there it, it worked out well for us but now for the second coat we're gonna go primer and stone chip or top coat immediately on it yeah. so the first top coat will come on and I'm gonna spray it on the amount of money I'm using on rollers and all of that I bought a spray gun CDC guys were nice enough nice enough to borrow us a compressor so we're gonna spray the top coat on and then you guys must be thinking oh but it's gonna show imperfections but the, on top of that coat I'm gonna roll it on with a, with a soft sponge roller so that will allow me to bring a little bit of texture back into it 
and if I need to do any a repair anywhere in the world, as long as I'm buying a Sigma product, the code uh, color on the code is exactly the same, never changes, and I'll be able to do it with the roll, I don't need a compressor there after. So Simona was in here yesterday, it was a bit short-handed, so I couldn't record me installing it, but there's our base that we built that you guys saw in previous episodes. And if you haven't seen us building the base and this backboard, check out other episodes out, it's in there. Simone might leave a link in the description for the how we built that stuff. So every single part of this bathroom was built. The only thing we're reusing is a section of the floor where the toilet sits, because it fits perfect into this cavity. She's still good. There was no rot in it, and it's most of it's fiberglass. Got a little bit of a wood core, but it's floor, it's out of the shower. I eliminated the bath. It was too small, too cramped. I eliminated the the previous cabinet that we had in the basin cabinet because that one was huge. It came here, so you're so squished. This is the new one that we built. It just needs to be trimmed. I haven't trimmed it yet, but that's pretty much where it's going to go. And now it gives a lot. Check how much more space we got now. That's that's going to be awesome. So that's going to fit in there. The floor is going to come in here, and it's nice, spacious bathroom. A nice big shower. I've got the shower seat in there. Just need to extend it. I actually shifted this wall a little bit out, but I did it because I had to recess this because there's a heat bracket over there. So I needed to. So I recessed that, and and water's not going to come through there because you're showering over here. And I put a seat in because I felt like that was something on on other boats that I've been on was really nice. You just soak yourself up, sit down, and you just hold yourself. Even if you're sailing, there's a bit of a rock around. You don't have to try and hold for it. I thought that was a great thing to add. And behind the seat, uh, there's not a hole there, but I'm gonna make a hole, I'm gonna run all the piping behind there, all the all the access cabling and everything in conduit, sealed off right through the bathroom to the front cabin. And then there'll be an access cabinet there, sealed waterproof access cabinet under that, under that seat. There'll be another one over here. And behind the toilet, there'll be another access cabinet. So you can access all the wiring, all the plumbing going through there and should be all the problems solved. Lighting will go in the ceilings, which we're gonna run through. Thank Our you. bathroom is much bigger now. Well, it's not bigger, it's just filled. No, it is. Better space use. Better space, yeah. So yeah, let's kick out this. Me and Moses are gonna tackle this. It's Saturday afternoon, and as much as we don't wanna work, we never wanna work on a Saturday, but this baby has been set Monday to Saturday every single day, Sunday, Sundays, but if you've got dreams and you want to live them, you've got to do it yourself. Nobody's going to build your dreams for you. We had to make a few adjustments to our floor, but since our base and cabinetry had been made smaller, we saw that we needed to add an extra build-up of fiberglass onto our floor. What it's going to be now is that will be secured and then I can't remember there's a regulation either it was open inside or outside but I'll probably make it open this way so it'll open that door open there step in the shower and close shower up stay tuned till next week where we carry on building our head by adding some lockers for our plumbing Epoxy in our shower wall and build up our bathroom floor. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe below if you haven't yet. Thank you so much to our amazing patrons. Your support means the world to us and allows us to carry on with our productions. You guys are legends. If you'd like to join our patron family, a link is in the description below.